what do you think beauty is? We seem to, so underlying this idea of playing with aesthetics is we find certain things beautiful. Yeah. What is it uh, that humans find beautiful? And why do we need to find things beautiful? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. It's not, I'm not, attra- I, I mean, I am attracted to, to to style and aesthetics because I think they're beautiful, but it's much more because I think it's fun to play with. Um, and so, um, so I will get to the beauty thing, but I like, I, I guess I want to just explain a little bit about my motivation in this space because it's really an intellectual thing for me. Um, and, you know, Stuart Brand has this great infographic uh, about the layers of like human society. Um, and I think it starts with like the natural sciences and like physics at the bottom and it goes through all these layers and it's like economics. And then like fashion is at the top is like the fastest moving part of human culture. And I think I really like that because it's so dynamic and so short and it's temporal longevity uh, contrasted with like studying the laws of physics, which are like, you know, like the deep structure reality that I feel like I like bridging those scales tells me much more about the structure of the world that I live in. That said, there's certain kinds of fashions, like a dude in a black suit, the black tie seems to, um, be less dynamic. Yeah. It seems to persist through time. Are you embodying this? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I, I, I think... <laughs> I think it's just. I'd like to see you wear yellow, Lex. <laughs> I don't. I wouldn't even know what to do with myself. I would freak out. I wouldn't know how to. You act wouldn't in know the how world. to be you. Yeah, I know this you. is amazing, though, isn't it? Yeah. Amazing. Like you have the choice to do it. But but one of my favorite, um, just on the question of beauty, one of my favorite uh, fashion designers of all time is Alexander McQueen, um, and he he was really phenomenal, but like his early, and actually I kind of, I kind of used like what happened to him in the fashion industry as a coping mechanism with our paper when, uh, like the nature paper in, in the the fall when everyone was saying it was controversial and how terrible that like, you know, like, but controversial is good. Right. But like when Alexander McQueen, you know, first came out with his fashion lines, he was mixing horror and beauty. Um, and people were horrified. It was so controversial. Like they, like it was macabre. He had like, you know, like it looked like there were blood on the models and like. Um, that was beautiful. I'm just looking at some pictures here. Yeah. No, I mean, his stuff is amazing. Um, his first uh, like runway line, I think was called Nihilism. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you could find it. Um, you know, I mean, he was really dramatic. I, he, he carried a lot of trauma with him. Uh, there you go. That's yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. Um, but he changed the fashion industry. His stuff became very popular. <laughs> that's that's a good outfit to show up to a party. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but this gets at the question, like, is is that horrific or is it beautiful? Um, and I think, you know, he he had a traumatic he he ended up um uh, uh committing suicide and actually he, he left his death note on the descent of man. Um so he was he was a really deep uh person. So, I mean, great fashion certainly has that kind of depth to it. Yeah, it sure does. Uh, so I think it's the intellectual pursuit, right? Like it's not, um, so this is like very highly intellectual. And I think it's a lot like how I play with language is the same way that I play with fashion or the same way that I play with ideas in theoretical physics. Like there's always this space that you can just push things just enough. So they're like, they look like something someone thinks is familiar, but they're not familiar. Um, and yeah, and I think that's really cool. It seems like beauty doesn't have much function, right? But but it seems to also have a lot of influence on the way it we It has tons of function. What do you other. mean it doesn't have function? I guess sexual selection incorporates beauty somehow, but why? Because beauty is a sign of health or something? I don't even... Oh, evolutionarily, maybe, but then beauty becomes a signal of other things, right? So it's really not like, and then beauty becomes an adaptive trait, so it can change with different species. Like, you know, maybe some peop- some species would think, well, you thought the frog having babies come out of its back was beautiful, and I thought it was grotesque. Like, there's not a universal definition of what's beautiful. It is something that is dependent on your history and how you interact with the world. And I guess what I like about beauty, like any other concept, is when you turn it on its head. So, um, you know, maybe the traditional uh, conception of, you know, why women wear makeup and they dress certain ways is because they want to look beautiful and, uh, you know, pleasing to people. And I just like to do it because it's a confidence thing. It's about embodying 
uh, the person that I want to be and about owning that person. And then that the way that people interact with that person is very different than if I didn't have the, like if I wasn't using that attribute as part of, and obviously that that's influenced by the society I live and like what's aesthetically pleasing things. But it's interesting to be able to turn that around and not have it necessarily be about the aesthetics, but about the power dynamics that the aesthetics create. But you're saying there's some function to beauty in that way, in the way you're describing, in the dynamic it creates in the social interaction. Well, well, the point is you're saying it's an adaptive trait for like sexual selection or something. And I'm saying that the adaptation that beauty confers is far richer than that. And some of the adaptation is about social hierarchy and social mobility um, and just plain social dynamics. Like why do some people dress goth? It's because they identify with a community and a culture associated with that and they get you know, and, and that's a, a beautiful aesthetic. Uh, it's a, it's a different aesthetic. Some people don't like it. Um, so it has the same richness as does language. Yes. It's the same kind of. Yes. Uh, and I think, I think too few people think about the way that they, the aesthetics they build for themselves in the morning and how they carry it in the world and, and the way that other people interact with that because they put clothes on and they don't think about clothes as carrying function. <laughs> 